and go Daniel ho Daniel oh what da dang dang this is the black pot aka kuku show them away we speak truth to power and of course here we don't criticize but if we must criticize we'll do it on only one condition to build and not to destroy that is why we say we are in the service of god and country from the news reel we always endeavor to keep it real and i need you to come along my brother my sister this is the black pot aka kukushunamu where we speak truth to power and the very first story i am looking at today my brother my sister is taking from ghana wherever and i need you to come along this is very important my brother my sister he says and i read regardless of the hardship ghana is better off than uk in terms of living standards and this is coming from the utterances of wound to me regardless of the hardship ghana is better off than the uk in terms of living standards chairman wound to me and i read ashanti regional chairman for the new patriotic party the npp bernard and Chibosiako, has acknowledged that there is hardship in ghana however he believes that the standard of living in ghana regardless of the hardship is better than in the united kingdom now the man popularly called chairman wound to me indicated that people in the united kingdom hardly have the cash to save as all their income goes into funding their upkeep. Citing an example of party attendees being made to come along with their own food and water for parties, he said there is an abundance of food in Ghana that party attendees are always provided with food. I acknowledge that there is hardship in the country, but the hardship is global in nature. And we are working to make life better for the people of Ghana. Now, the living standard in Ghana is far better than that of the people in the United Kingdom. And this is true because now, even if you are attending a party in the UK, you have to provide your own drinks, water, and food. So if someone earns £1,500 in the UK and pays rent of £800 and pays for other bills what is left of the person to save and also take care of the family nothing we are better off in the uk if you have to go to the hospital you will have to book an appointment but it's not the same with this country mm -mm -mm. i will urge you journalists to tell the truth to the people of ghana and those who live outside Ghana should also be honest with, them, with their family members and let them understand how the hardship is global. Now, the people should be made to know that COVID and the Russia-Ukraine war has led, has had an adverse effect on every country, he said, while speaking to the media. <laughs> Our African ancestors have a saying which I would like to share with you. They say, and I quote, The madman's dance is funny to everybody except the family members of the madman. The dance of the madman is always funny to everybody except the family members. Of the madman go to the market square the madman is there dancing naked people have surrounded him clapping and are so happy that he is entertaining them entertaining in quotes but if the brother or the mother or father or sister of the madman happens to chance this crowd that dance will certainly not be funny to him or her they will quickly claw him carry him home, give him a good bath, and probably even chain him so he will not go out to entertain people again. That madman is chairman, will to me? 
that madman who is dancing naked in the market square is chairman wound to me and i'm speaking as a lyrical person i'm speaking as somebody my brother my sister who knows a bit of literature you could call that parables listen chairman wound to me says the living conditions in ghana are far better than what we have in the uk my brother my sister he goes ahead to say in the uk if there is a party people have to take their own food there if you have to go and visit the hospital you have to book it and all that in a country where there's no order you can get up and run to the hospital at any time even if it's not an emergency in a country where there's no order there's no respect for appointment people knock at your door every time they don't respect your privacy and they do not even respect the work that you do my brother my sister watch this chairman want to me says he agrees that there is hardship in ghana but it is better in ghana as compared to the uk a country that has electricity 25 hours a day eight days a week a country that has water flowing through their taps a country my brother my sister that has access to doctors in the uk one doctor is to four people in ghana one doctor is to 500 people plus do you know what that means if people must have access to one doctor in ghana the doctor would have to deal with 500 people that is the ratio plus is even increased in my days it was 250 to one doctor in ghana and in the uk it was two to one my brother when we speak let's speak like sane people in the uk my brother my sister they have access to education and the education that they have access to is what all these dirty leaders are boasting about oh i went to school in the uk oh my degree is from the uk nana and the rest who are slung in the tree they got their slangs from the uk as they say my brother my sister they have no respect for ucc neither do I, do they have the respect that it deserves for the greatest university in the world, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. I attended that beautiful university. My brother, my sister, when you sit back and listen to some of these utterances, you can see straight away that these are utterances of a morosed psychopath. I intentionally choose those words so that many people would not understand until they consult a dictionary. My brother, my sister, I said, Chairman Wound to me, with this speech and some others that he made and delivered, he is sounding like a morose psychopath. Hallelujah. My brother, my sister, you are making a fool out of the people. You are calling the people idiots when you come out and tell me that the standard of living in Ghana is better than that of the UK. I wish so because I am African and for that matter Ghanaian. I am looking up to the day when what Chairman Wun to me has said is the truth. But when politicians pray the ostrich, they know for sure that the galamse money that they have in their pocket is what is making them feel and play the almighty my brother my sister it hurts and it's an insult to the common man who works tooth and nail to be able to put food on the table in the uk people take food to their parties it depends on what part of the uk you went to number two now if the people are giving the money and they are asked to provide for themselves it is more dignifying than when government throws away charity at the people. It's an insult to live on charity. In the UK, they do not believe in charity that much. They believe in empowering the people. I travel to the UK, my brother, my sister, and I take a young girl out 
hoping that I'll be able to strike a romantic acquaintance. Now we go and sit down and we're having a drink. Oh, right after having the drink, I call for the bill. And I want to pay for it like I do in Ghana. The young lady looks at me and says, what is my bill? I will pay for it myself, no matter how much I insist. She tells me it's dignifying for a person to pay their own bills. Does that mean that their standard of living is low? It just means that they are virtuous. My brother, my sister, it is dignifying. Again, let a ship come into this country and say that it's looking for people to go to the UK and live there permanently and change their statuses from Ghana to England. My brother, Chairman Wun to me, and everybody that stand under that banner will jump onto that ship. If the living standard is that low, why would people want to still leave Ghana and go and live in the UK? It's an insult to the understanding and the minds of our people. So these are the people the NPP calls the men. They have the men. Chairman Wun to me and Napo, these are the men they have. Oh, what an insult to the understanding of the people. Sometimes I wonder why they still allow and Kibosia Kun, aka Chairman Wun to me to keep talking. Is it because he probably has some money after destroying the earth? AKA Galamse money? Is that why? Is it true? Does he really have any money like that? Because my brother, my sister, there hasn't been a single instant that Chairman Wun to me has made sense to me on any political platform. Apart from going around and showing how much gold he has made, yet not telling us how much land and environment he has destroyed in order to bring out that gold. Oh, what a shameless people we have in this country. They have no respect for our nation anymore. They keep pushing this guy, a huge ignoramus, to go out there and make a mockery of us. Let Chairman Wood to me go to the U UK embassy and be denied a visa. He might probably commit a suicide. That, that, that suicide that we all don't want to hear about. I stop it. Now the next thing I want to look at and I need all of you to come along. Please, this is very important. This one I'm also taking from my joy online. Lord God have mercy. Oh my God, what a country. I read, it says, Napo will visit and apologize to Nzema chiefs over Nkrumah comment. And this is the Elembele DCE talking. Who is he? Now the district chief executive and new patriotic party's parliamentary candidate for the Elembele constituency in the western region, Kwesi Bonzu, has announced plans that Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe also known as Napo, I would visit the Inzima land and apologize to the chiefs. Now, during this visit, Dr. Prempe would formally apologize to the traditional authorities, particularly the chiefs and people of Nkrumfo, Nkrumah's hometown. This visit comes in response to recent controversies and is seen as an effort to mend relations. <laughs> If I were the chiefs, after apologizing, we will chase him out and his entourage. Chase them out. Make sure that they leave their shoes behind. This is a desecration that can never be pacified. There are some desecrations that you need a God to pacify. There are some desecrations that you need a cow. There are some that you need a dog. In some cases, you need a camel. In some cases, you need an elephant. In some cases, you need a human being. This is where it is. And that human being that should be sacrificed for this desecration is Napo. He made those utterances. It's only the head of Napo, my brother, my sister. That can save this desecration. And I'm speaking in parables. If I were Napo, I will try 
to fight this desecration. And let me give you the roadmap. Do not even wait until you get to the Elembele chiefs. We all are Elembele chiefs as we stand right now. We are all offended. We all are Elembele chiefs. We are sons and daughters of Kwame Nkrumah. The founder of this great nation. The man who is recognized all over the world. Ha! If a new country eh, is discovered in space or on the moon, my brother, Kwame Nkrumah's name would have long been heard there. That's how much influence Kwame Nkrumah had. Don't you respect when you swat the Kwame Nkrumah came from a small Nkrumfo, a tiny Nkrumfo, but he's been recognized around the world through sheer hard work. Passionate hard work. You don't recognize this? When you saw here, just like Bob Marley, he came from a little trench town, a little nine mile in St. Anne, a very tiny nine mile, smaller than Tamale. My brother, my sister, but he got recognized in the whole wild world. If you don't respect this feat, and they will new sword here. As for the Elambele chiefs, with all love and respect, don't allow this feat to even touch your ground and desecrate it even the more. Don't allow this. They will do it for political reasons. They are so arrogant if nothing is at stake. They will never, ever apologize. Remember, Elam Bella Chiefs, this is not the first time Napo is saying this. When I finish this, I'm going to send a message to the Elam Bella Chiefs. I've been to Nkronfo so many times. And I know Kwesi Bonzo personally. I met him and I interviewed him on tape. He's a gentleman. My brother, don't allow this feat to desecrate Elembele and the rest of the areas. That guy is not fit for office. Simple. We are hurt, and it would only take human sacrifice. And again, I'm speaking in parables. I do not support human sacrifice. I don't even support the killing of animals. But I'm speaking in parables. It will take beyond the Mississippi River to pacify this desecration. Next thing I want to look at, and I need you to come along. Oh, my God, have mercy. Oh, interesting times are here. I'm reading this, my brother, my sister, from Ghana Web, and he says, Betrayal. Why I quit NPP is because of Napo. And this is Wayusi narrating. How many of us know Wayusi? He is an actor, diminutive in figure, very talented, and he's speaking. Please put up a photograph of Wayusi for me so people will get to know exactly who Wayusi is. He's a member of the Kumawood Fraternity, he's an actor. Wayosi has spoken. Listen, Kumawood actor Joseph Osei, widely known as Wayosi, has disclosed why he left the new patriotic party, attributing his departure to the Minister of Energy, Dr. Matthew Opoku Prempe, also referred to as Napo. Wayosi, this is the photograph of Wayosi. It's enough, you can take it off. It's not a good enough picture. Please find me a better photograph. Wayosi shared that during Napo's campaign, for the member of parliament seat for Manchia South constituency, he offered significant support to the minister, but felt unacknowledged. I take it again. Wayosi shared that during Napo's campaign for the member of parliament seat for Manchia South constituency, he offered significant support to the minister, but felt unacknowledged. He recounted being proactive in calling delegates to secure votes for Napo contributing to the minister's successful election. However, Wayosi expressed disappointment in an interview with Zion Flex, noting that Napo's interactions with him diminished after providing steadfast support. The actor described a feeling disregarded by Napo's action, leading to his disinterest in the NPP. In his own words, he said, 
I got to know MPP through Napo, and he needed my assistance for his MP campaign. He handed me a list of delegates who might oppose him, and I reached out to each one to persuade him to uh, vote for us. Since he was uh, elected MP, our conversations haven't lasted more than 30 seconds. Nearly every time I call, he is occupied with a meeting. It dawned on me that he no longer needed my help after achieving the goal. This realization caused me to lose interest in the party. <laughs> When you live in a country where people follow politicians in order to eat, it's a shame. Listen to what YOC is saying. Be fair to Napo. Be fair to Napo. So you went and supported him to win elections. For that matter, you expect that he would always have time to talk to you? I thought he would have said something. Like, oh, since he won the election, he has not done anything for the constituency. The delegates are all disappointed. Oh, the majority of the people are all complaining. Then you'll be making sense. But it is all about me, 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 me. Me na mi buano, e osa ocha, o mami say. Me ana mi buano, e o frame, e na mi na mi say. E na mi, we have to stop this foolishness. You followed Napo and helped him win. Why did you do that? For you to be able to eat or for him to be able to help the people of his constituency. It is sad. And we still have those people. Until we are able to deal with this, my brother, our politics will continue to be dirty. Anybody can be bought. Napo saw you and asked you to help him. And therefore, you called some delegates and talked to them, and they probably changed their minds and voted because of you. If you are coming back to us and saying you left the NPP, leave the NPP for a good reason, not this wacky reason. Now he's campaigning for the NDC. It's the same thing. If you read the story further, when the NDC wins power and nobody's able to speak to him for hours on the phone, Nobody is able to put food on his table personally. You can feed the whole of Ghana. If he doesn't feel good about it, he will still leave the NDC. Such people are not worth it at all. And all the so-called celebrities who are running after politicians, your day will come like Wayosi's day. You guys will suffer. You should be looking at the people, the masses. Look at Ghana. You have a voice. You can support whoever you want to support, but make it discreet. You come out flatly and support A, B, C, D, and F. At the end of the day, you come back to us and tell us you supported them and they did not help you. Is it about you? It's about the people. I will be happy if all Ghana is fed and happy and I am famished and dead. If it will take me to go down so that Ghana will rise. Ah, what are you waiting for? Let me go down right now. Like Jesus Christ did. He came and laid his life for the whole world. That is what we call an achievement. Bob Marley said, and I'm going to end with that. He said, if life was all about me, let me know what I If life was all about me, let me know what I he was shot in Jamaica. They tried to assassinate him. He was shipped all the way to England. He recuperated well. And one day he got up and said he was going to Jamaica because Jamaica needed him to perform for peace. And they asked him, the journalists asked him, Bob, we hear you want to go to Jamaica where they tried assassinating you. He said, yes, I'm going. And he smiled. I said, are you not scared for your life? You don't value your life? He said, my life? If my life was all about myself, man, me no want it. My life is for the people. <laughs> you know how Bob Marley used to laugh. Anytime I think about this, it inspires me to lay down myself and sacrifice to see the people get better. 
It doesn't matter who insults me. It, does, it doesn't matter who wants to see me off radio. The same God who gave me a voice will continue to put that microphone in my hand. His message must reach all four corners of the earth without fear or favor. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If life was all about me, me no want it, man. Take it, man. We don't achieve anything if life was all about us. Until my life is able to touch the multitudes, my life is useless. It's the black pot. I have two more things I want to look at very quickly. Each one of them will take only about um, two minutes each. Watch this. This one is from Ghana Web. And it says... Why I don't own a residential property abroad? And BBC also has that. And this is Aliko Dangote. For most wealthy individuals, owning assets and properties comes with various motivations. This can often be associated with a diversified investment, luxury status, or residential use. For Nigerian industrialist Aliko Dangote, who is also the wealthiest person in Africa, uh, not having a residential property abroad is based on his primary focus on industrialization at home. I'll leave it here. Mm. <laughs> Ras Kimono has a song that I love so much from those days up till now. And he calls that Dragon Spit. They carry away money and I go to foreign land. They carry away money and I go to England. They carry away money and I go to foreign land. They carry away money and I go to Switzerland. They use we money to build another land. They carry away that. That's what he sings in that. While the people in Africa, they are under pressure. Push them, push them to the dragon speed. Push them, push them, we are go kill them dead. They carry our money and go to the foreign land, England. Switzerland, they use our money to develop another land while the people in Africa are under pressure. Conscious lyrics. My brother, Ali Kodan Gote, the wealthiest man in Africa, does not have a single house, not even at Takpami, anywhere in the world. All his houses are right here in Nigeria. Oh, Jesus have mercy. Nigeria. The wealthiest man in Africa. Can you say that of our politicians? Some chiefs and kings in Ghana even have houses in England. I say some presidents in Africa do not even live in Africa. Like Paul Bia, he lives in Switzerland. My brother, my sister. In fact, what Ali Kodangote has said has touched me deeply. Honestly, I wanted to have a house in every part of the world if I could. Because my message is going to go to the whole of the world. And anywhere I go, I should have a house, even if it's a tent, to lay my head, do whatever I can do, and move on. And then the house will revert to charity till I return. Hallelujah. My brother, my sister, Aliko Dan Gote has made it super clear that charity begins at home and when you have a place you can call home, dignify it. I don't want to talk beyond this. I leave it here. I leave it here. Now the last thing I want to look at and that will take another two minutes. It's from Peace FM Online, and he said, Bagbin adjourned sitting after only 24 MPs showed up in Parliament. My God, and that's yesterday. Parliament adjourned sitting on Monday, July 15, 2024, after only 24 MPs appeared in the House. The minority had earlier threatened to disrupt parliamentary business with consent of a quorum if the majority caucus failed to avail themselves of the business of the house. I leave it here. These are people 
Who want ex gratia? It is compulsory to be at the parliament and discuss the problems of the people. Parliament sittings are made in such a way that you are given some allowance so you can go to your constituencies and return with some information. I don't buy that excuse. That, oh, they went to their constituencies. That is why they have not been able to come early. No, sir. Say it to the rocks and the mountains. A proper MP, if he is not sick, should always be in parliament. That is what you are paid for. If you don't come to parliament, you are stealing from the people. You are paid to come to parliament and represent the people. Then you will sit elsewhere. My brother, my sister, and be ghosting. You know what it means to say ghosting? Some of them, my brother, my sister, are doing other businesses that are bringing them money, profits. So the parliament is just a stepping stone to their businesses. Oh my God. Any MP who refuses to go to parliament and he's well, he's a thief. He is stealing from the people. That is why you are being paid to go to parliament. Unless there's a special duty that you've been assigned to in the interest of the nation and the people. Your primary business and concern is to represent your constituency, the people. And if you fail to do that, you are stealing from the people. I leave it here. <laughs> Yeah, well, let's have a time, son. Yeah, boy.